Bobby Lopez here, Quick Fix Golf, quickfixgolf.com. If you'd like to get a free analysis of your swing, that's the place to go. Tonight, we have our online class that is, as far as I'm concerned, my favorite. Why? Because anybody can do this. Whether you're a one handicapper or a 30 handicapper, you can do what I'm going to show you tonight. And it's going to make you better. I promise. If, I, if it doesn't make you better, I'll mow your lawn for a year. So, um, Pay attention to this one because this is important. And and it, it's so easy, um, it's just a shame people don't do it. And a lot of golfers don't know. Well, you're going to know now. So you're going to get a free special report too. Just go to quickservice at quickfixgolf.com. That's the email, quickservice at quickfixgolf.com. Just send me an email saying, send me this free special report on how to take your golf swing from the driving range to the golf course, and I will send it to you absolutely free. There's Darren. He's down in Myrtle Beach. That's me. I'm in Richmond right now. But when we're together, we're the PGA pros of Tupelo Bay. And again, if you want to have a free analysis, you know what to do. Just get at your cell phone and upload your video to our site, or you can attach it to an email and send it to us. How to get ready to play golf. Take your game from the driving range to the golf course. Anybody can do this. What most people do is they got a 10.30 starting time. They show up at 10.23, and they're rushing to get the clubs out of the trunk. Go put it on a cart. Quick run to the pro shop and pay, and then tee it up on the first hole. That is an absolute recipe for disaster. You must arrive at the golf course. I'm putting here for the regular average golfer 45 minutes. Me personally, I figure two hours plus. So if I've got a 10 o'clock starting time, I'll be at the golf course by 7:30, 8 o'clock at the latest, because I got two hours worth of work to do to get ready to play, or I'm going to have a rot day. I can get ready to play and still have a rot day. <laughs> you never know, but but anyway, it's what you have to do. I drive slow to the golf course with plenty of time to spare. Hogan was known for driving under the speed limit when he went to the golf course. You've got to get yourself relaxed and slow down. You can't go wired to play this game. It ain't happening. Preferably, you drive to the golf course alone. The last thing you need is to listen to some knucklehead in the car Carrying on about how the course is so hard and the fifth hole is a long par four. Da, 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 you don't listen to that crap because you never know. You play one shot at a time. Once you get to the golf course, sit in the car a minute, slow down, take a deep breath, look around, get into the surroundings. What's going on out here? Smell the air. Slow yourself down. Then get your clubs out of the car very slowly and head out to the putting green first. And the first thing I work on is four foot putts. We've got the, uh, I don't know if it was last night or the night before, we have the four foot putt drills and stuff like that. That's what I do. And I spend about, I wanna say 45 minutes, I'm gonna get the 45 minutes uh, time period for you. So I'm gonna say only 15 minutes. I really spend at least a half an hour, maybe even 35 minutes on nothing but four feet and in. And you've got to be disciplined to do that. Most people just get bored and pull their hair out and run down the first fairway naked or something, you know. Here it's just putting green first, four foot putts. I'll spend 50, let's say you're going to spend 15 minutes on it. As far as I'm concerned, I'd spend the whole 45 minutes if I had to. If I'm not putting well from four feet and in, if for whatever reason I'm having trouble, I'm not going to move on to anything else, even the driving range. I'll tee it up without even hitting a, a ball. Because I'm not going to waste my time to go out on the golf course and hit tee shots and second shots and bunker shots and rough shots and da 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 when I can't get in a freaking hole from four feet away. I'm just wasting my time. If it takes me two shots to get there on par four, it's 400 yards long. And then it takes me two more shots to get there from four feet? Are you kidding me? I, you have to, you, you, you got to be deadly from four feet in. I mean deadly. The next thing I work on is 25 to 20 foot foot, maybe 10 minutes. What do I do? Stick a T if you want to in four different places. Put one at 20, one at 25, one at 30, one at 40. And roll a ball at the 20, roll a ball at the 40. Roll a ball at the 25, roll a ball at the 35. Roll a ball at the 20, roll a ball at the 45. Stagger the distances and watch the ball. Don't keep your head down. Observe the ball rolling on the green. Now, usually, if in a busy golf course, the practice putting green will be faster than the greens on the course because everybody in the world is stomping all over. But a lot of golf courses, you don't find anybody at the green. And if you do, 
they're usually there just waiting to tee off and they throw three balls down and they start rolling from one hole to the next hole, which shows they have absolutely no idea what the hell they're doing. None whatsoever. All right. Then I'll start doing my chipping. Let's, let's budget 10 minutes for that. So that's 10, 20, 35 minutes. Well, oh, that's too much. We're going to take something off of that. Probably five minutes off the chipping. Because we want some more time left for the range, just a little bit. And that's what I do first. And as I go to each level, that's a level of importance. The most important thing I'll do all day is four foot putts. The next most important thing I'll do is leaving my 25 or 40 foot putt within the four foot putt circle. The next most important thing I'll do is have my chip shots and my lob shots to land within the four foot circle. That's my whole thought process. Then I head out to the range. Take a deep breath. Slow down. Wouldn't even hurt to go to the bathroom before you go to the range. We saw a five minute break. Of course, I've got two hours plus. For you, you're budgeting 45 minutes. And let me say it this way. If you're going to play golf, and it takes you four and a half hours. Why not be there five and a half hours? And do it the right way. And and be more successful at it and have more fun and enjoy yourself a lot more. So what I'll do is I'm going to hit six or eight balls with a six iron. And I'm probably going to hit the ball around 140 yards. And that's that's as far as it's going to go. I'm going to swing really slow, really easy, and try to feel my arms versus my body is all are all the gears meshing. Are they working? Why do I swing a six iron? Because Dick Farley, who I used to, he was the guy to give me my first break on job in Spain and everything. He used to say, you never start really swinging a golf club till you get to the six iron. Seven iron on down, you don't really swing. He's got a point. That's another conversation. But I take the six iron and swing real easy. And then I'll pick a target that's about 65 yards out. And I will take out my gap wedge, which I can usually hit around 90 or so, and I will hit it 65 yards. If I have to, I'll take out my 58 degree, but most of the time I'll try and do it with the, with the uh, 54 degree. And just uh, hit it 65 yards at a target. Again, I'm swinging a lot slower than I would normally swing. A lot slower, because I can hit that club 90. So I do six to eight balls like that, and I said, then I go, okay, let's move up the bag. When I say move up the bag, that means now I'll hit the eight iron. Then I'll hit the six iron. Then I'll hit the four iron. Then I'll hit the three wood. Then I'll go back down the bag. Then I go back down. I hit the four iron again. I hit the six iron again. I hit the eight iron again. I hit the wedge again. Then I hit my driver as the last club. And if I hit the first tee shot, I said, when I get to the driver, I'm watching my watch. And if I see that I'm about 10 minutes before the tee off time, I whip out at Mr. Driver, tee it up, and rip one. And if I hit it absolutely dead solid perfect, guess what happens? The session is over. It's over. Don't hit another ball. Don't keep hitting more balls. I got another one like that. No, that's it. End your session right there with that tee shot that you just roasted. Now, there are some other things you can do before that because you want to carry over that feeling right to the first tee when you get there. Some of the things you could do, we could add back in here, if you have time. And the thing is, it, the time goes so quick. Um, you just can imagine, you know, you, we're sitting here 45 minutes, so four or five minutes just goes by like that. I mean, it's amazing. That's why it takes me two hours. But you could play the first three holes on the range. Hit the tee shot, hit the second shot that you know for that this is more or less what you're going to have to hit. Play the first three holes in your mind right on the driving range so you sort of get those out of your system before you tee up. You won't have time to do all that if you only got 45 minutes. The problem with most people, though, is they spend almost all their warm-up time on the range. And then they go to the green, like I say, and they know, well, there's 10 more minutes to tee off or five more minutes to double, and I'll roll a few balls real quick. That, that's not going to do it. That's not going to make it. You just don't waste your time. This has to be a very organized routine that you follow every stinking time you play golf. If somebody told me, and I've had somebody tell we're going to play golf at 7 o'clock, i say, you are, but not me. Because <laughs> I have to be there at 5 in the morning, and I ain't doing it. So um, you've got to go through your routine the way it needs to be. After you hit that successful drive, session's over. 
you carry over that same feeling when you get to the first one and say, I'm just going to repeat exactly what I just did two minutes ago. And you're done. Let's open up the phones for uh, calls now. Who's got some questions? Bobby, you talk about uh, different wedges. What clubs do you have in your bag? I have a 58 degree wedge. I have a 54 degree. Well, well really, my 50, 54 is a 52 because I bent it. And the 58 is still a 58. The pitching wedge is a 48. The nine irons are 44 and et cetera. And all my clubs are four degrees apart in loft. Except when for you chip, go ahead. And when you, you practice chipping, you're practicing high, low chips, runners? Eight iron, eight iron usually you use an eight iron, seven, eight, nine iron right along in there. Okay. Land it on the room and let it roll. <laughs> Who's making all this noise here? Any other questions? Hey, Bobby, it's Justin. Yeah, Justin. So, so the, the main um, problem that that I run into and uh, the group of guys I play with and we're all you know, decent golfers is um, start warming up and uh, like let's say I, I usually hit a, like a little draw. I start warming up and uh, and I'm hitting a, uh, I'm, I'm not making clean contact or I'm hitting a little bit of a fade. And then I, all of a sudden I think, okay, I've got to, I've got to fix this before I before I head to the course. Oh. What, what what do you do when um, as you're doing this warm up? If uh, you're kind of not if if you you can tell something's off in your swing, you're not hitting the ball quite the way you you want to hit it. I go right What's, back. I go right back to the wedge in a hurry. I go right back to that wedge shot to 65 yards in a hurry. In a hurry. And I try to swing, you know, sort of all arms and really feel. I go right back to this right here. And and then maybe after I do the 65 yards, maybe two or three shots, and then I might go ahead and swing that six iron real slow again. And then then go ahead and grab something like a hybrid and knock the snot out of it and see what happens. But if it persists and you go on, if you're going to play golf and it's persisting on the range, you're all over the place, what do you got to do? Shut down the body and swing the arms. I mean, there's nothing else you can do. Uh, you could tee off the first hole with a three wood. If you're hitting the driver all over the place on the range, use a three wood until you get your confidence back up. I mean, it's never, it's never going to be, you know, I've had times when in my warm up, I, I just hit it like a dog and played the best round of my life. And I've had times when I hit it so great, I, you know, your aspirations are so high, and you have a horrible day. You know, it all depends. Yeah, but, you know, that's golf. Yeah. That's just golf. <laughs> You do any stretching exercises or anything? I just go right to your club. Yeah, I, I go. I stretch. I stretch out for a Miller Light. <laughs> That's one thing, man. The old days, in the seventies, nobody exercised. Are you Gary Player? He was the only one. And Nicholas used to swear up and down that he never did it anyway, but I'm sure he did. You could tell that that was Gary Player. Um, Nicholas didn't exercise a bunch or anything. Well, the older I get, the stiffer my back gets. The old, yeah, the, yeah, the, the old days, well, your back's getting stiff, but uh, what you need to do is go to Hong Kong. See, I went to Hong Kong once, and they had this, this guy took me in this room. There was like 20 beds, see? And all these guys were on these beds, and they had these girls walk on your back, and they don't just stand on your back. They have, like, rails on the ceiling, and they hang onto these rails, you see? Hmm. And they, and they, you know, they, they press, the, they use their feet to pressure on your back, and then the, the guy said to me, he said, the lady wants to know what your name is. And I went, the name's Bond, James Bond. And the whole place cracked up laughing. <laughs> you in one big room with like 20 guys here. This is, you know, there aren't separate rooms. And uh, <laughs> Hong Kong was a piece of work. That place is something. The, the people eat snakes and everything over there. I went to the castle and there were these snakes hanging. And then they had fish where they cut the fish just just, just below his head. And you can see his lungs breathing. Because he's, he's, he's slit wide open, but they're still alive. They keep sprinkling water on it to keep, keep the poor. Keep the poor fish alive. He's cutting the ass. <laughs> no wonder we caught the virus over there. Well, they eat everything raw. Bobby. 
Bobby? Yes. Knudsen used to say when he was on the range warming up, he had to find his alignment of the day. Interesting. He was, so he uh, different days, he had more flexibility or whatever, and he maybe, you know, closed his stance a bit more, opened his stance, trying to get his favorite ball flight, I guess. Well, Does that make any sense? Yes, yeah, Sam Snead used to say if he goes to the range and he's fading, then he plays with a fade that day. If he's hooking, he plays with a hook that day. No, they were they yeah. Were, they were a lot different back in the old days. Um, than these kids are today. It's 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 a completely different game. Completely different game. I talked to Bruce Flesher on the phone for a while, and and Bruce, when we were growing up, we thought he was going to be the next Jack Nicholas, and he did. I mean, he was really great. He he, he was a heck of a golfer, and. Uh, he even admitted, he said, it's just it's a different game today. And he was a long ball hitter in his day. He was a big kid. I played with him. I played with him in 1969. He 19. was really good. Yeah, I'm telling you, Bruce Lesher was good. Yeah, he won the uh, the U.S. Amateur. Yes. He was a low amateur in the Masters. Yep. And he came over and he came over to Israel and played in what's called the Maccabee Games. And he beat everybody. He won. Yeah, he was good. Bruce was oh. good. Bruce was good. We, I was very lucky. I grew up around a lot of good players as a kid. We, we had Bruce Flesher. We had Steve Eichstead, uh, Calvin Pete. I used to hang out with Calvin Pete a lot. Uh, Lee Elder, Pete Brown. Um, Florida just had a ton of really good golfers. They still do. You could play year round, you know. So, any other questions? Don't all talk at once. If you only had a short period of time, what would you concentrate mostly on? I'd stay in the bar and drink and save save my sanity. <laughs> I mean, how am I going to go out in a golf course and be miserable? You know, and, and that's one of the problems with this game, it, it, why it hasn't grown bigger, you know. It, it takes discipline. And that's not necessarily – the most sought after thing in society today is discipline like this. You've got to, it's it's got discipline and routine. And you gotta get into a routine and you do that routine. I promise you that if you went through this routine of just 45 minutes of this every time you play, about two months later you're gonna come back and call me, you're gonna say, damn Lopez, you were right. I can't believe how much better I'm playing. Forget even if you didn't worry work, work on your swing or anything, things will take care of themselves if you do these things the right way. Get two balls in. If you do these things the right way, a lot of stuff will take care of itself. You'd be if surprised. It doesn't, if it doesn't work, you're doing our graph, right? No, you commit suicide. That's it. <laughs> you jump off a building and mow your lawn for a year. Yeah, I'll be right out there in Pennsylvania ready to mow your lawn. <laughs> you know what they say? The, the story with Lee Trevino, the, the lady drives by and she sees Lee Trevino mowing his lawn and and the lady says, excuse me, sir, said, how much do you charge the mobile lawns? He said, well, this lady here, I don't charge her at all. She just gives me sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's supposed to be his big line. You know, Lee Trevino, a lot of guys didn't like him. He's funny on a microphone, but then afterwards, sometimes he can be a little. There's a lot of personalities out there. I like I like the story with him with the snake and Jack Nicholas. Oh, yeah. It's hilarious. Any other questions? Remember, just go to Quick Service or send an email to quickservice at quickfiskoff.com. I will send you the uh, – in fact, I'll send you two things. I can send you – I can save these slides as a PDF file, and I can send those to you along with the special report. So you'd have both. No problem at all. Heck of a deal. <laughs> and you owe me a beer the next time I see you. We'll call it even. You got it. You got it. All right. Any other questions? If not, we'll call it a night. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you. All right. Send send out your email so I can send all this stuff to you. Thanks, Bobby. Good Thanks. job, Bobby. Bye. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Shalom. Hasta luego. See you, Ricky Rick.